For this edition of the KTM Summer Grill, we're delighted to be joined by Ford's Product Communications and Motorsport Manager. That sounds like a mouthful, but he's a guy who's been around the game for a long time. Ben Nightingale, welcome. Thanks, Greg. Great to be here. How's the year been? Let's look back on 2023 before we, we dissect everything. Mm-hmm. On balance, it ended well with some, you know, a strong mm. showing at the Gold Coast and good form at, at Adelaide. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, great to finish well with a bit of momentum. Um, on balance, and you look at the whole year, I'd call it character building um, for, for us, for our teams, for our drivers in particular. But, um, but yeah, look, the thing I'm probably most proud of is that we just kept working. and We just kept churning and we kept pushing and we got there in the end. So, yeah, it was fantastic. Those, those wins at the end of the season were – the relief was palpable. It was incredible. You talked about it having its testing moments, right? Like how – stressful did it get here from a Ford management perspective and then even, I don't know what you can share at a, at a global level as well? Oh, yes, definitely um, stressful, absolutely, because you consider, you know, you start the season with this really heady expectation, I suppose, mm-hmm. you know, new, new era, Gen 3, new cars, we've rolled out the shiny new 7th um, generation Mustang, first time that car's on the racetrack anywhere in the world. And so, yeah, we've, we've got very high expectations of ourselves at Ford, and I think all of our teams do too. You know, you look at the calibre of teams we're partnered with, you know, DJR, Tickford, Grove, Walkinshaw, Blanchard, those are teams that are used to winning. Mm. And so um, as the year wore on, you know, well, look, it became apparent very quickly that there was an issue. And, um, and so behind the scenes, yeah, the conversations were ongoing from before the season began and, and all the way through. And, um, yeah, and so that included, obviously, Ford in Australia, Ford in North America, Mark Rushbrook, the Global Director of Motorsport for Ford Performance and his team, and then, of course, the Supercars Executive and all of our, you know, the, the leadership of our teams. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's at times, um, very stressful. Um, but we, yeah, as I said earlier, it's, it was really positive just to see everybody stay together mm. and just keep pushing forward. Let's rewind back to Adelaide last year, 2022, when it started to become apparent, or at least public, that there were some concerns over the Ford package and how competitive it would be. Could you have imagined then just what that battle was going to be like to try and get something like parity and that it would literally take the whole season? No, I would never have predicted the the year that we've had, no. Um, Yeah, it's funny actually you say that, AVL, because we've just been in Adelaide and I was sitting there thinking on that 12 months prior, you know, the conversations that were being had behind the scenes, yeah, the media had started picking up on things post VCAT and, um, and no, you know, we, yeah, we, we knew, we knew things weren't quite right at that point in time. And we were, we were making overtures to supercars behind closed doors. And, uh, and so we, we, and, and like I said, and those, those continued through the off season, there were a lot of meetings with supercars, and um, and then obviously that culminated in the the second VCAT yep. in February. Um, and at that point in time, based on the data and the knowledge that we had of you know the aerodynamic package at least, according to VCAT, they were equalised as close as they could be. Mm-hmm. Um, engines were a, were a separate were a separate issue um, and continue to be a separate issue. And so, yeah, we, we rolled out in Adelaide and I think, uh, s- sorry, I should say Newcastle, this start of this season. And, you know, that racing, it, it looked pretty good. And I think street circuits this year haven't been too bad for us. Yep. Um, it's, that, it's the higher speed, you know, higher aero dependent circuits with, was where it really showed up. And I think the, the alarm bells really started ringing when we went to the Grand Prix. Yeah. And that was when it, everybody, all of our teams were just like, hang on a second. This, is, this isn't right. Two of your cars also caught fire there, so I think that was probably a sign. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, there look, some dramas going suboptimal, on. suboptimal that. Yeah, 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 and, that, and that, that's, a whole other, that's a whole other story. But, um, yeah, the, the, the fires aside, we, we just didn't have the same level of performance at the Grand Prix, and, and so that was when, um, you know, it, it, was, it, became, it became obvious and supercars were onto it and... You know, to be fair to supercars, and I have to make this clear, I do believe that Shane Howard in particular has worked his ring out this year mm. to, to try to get this sorted. Yep. But he's been 
um, he's, he's been ring fenced for what of a better term by the regulations and by you know yep. um, by by the the contracts with teams and all of those kind of things so um, the supercars the parity triggers had to roll out that's how it works it's five races or five in eight and so we, we had to wait yeah. you know and, and, and that was the re- that's the result as frustrating as it's been I mean something I sort of thought about this year is that I don't know how much I want to say about this because you were kind of involved in the last time we had a bit of a parity issue uh, in supercars, but that was perhaps a case of some very smart people recognising some weaknesses in a process and designing a car that was very, very good that could still pass, jump the hurdles it needed to jump. This has more been a case of the fact that we have an unprecedented level of control parts in these cars. Parity is just so important now, more important than ever. This isn't actually a case of anyone trying to do something malicious or anything like that. It's just been a situation that I think has actually caught some people at Supercars by surprise at how critical parity was going to become like never before. Yeah, I think that's been, that's certainly been Ford's point of view from the beginning was we've had this massive shift in the technical regulations and the product that's on the track. Yeah. And the behind the scenes governance and parity processes didn't evolve to match. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and unfortunately they were found out. VCAT served us relatively well, you know, for a long period of time. But to your point, when the cars are as, are as equalised and, and controlled as they are now, um, the most minute parity discrepancy will be shown, you know, we'll have a, we'll have a light shine, shone on it. Whereas I think previously, you know, you might have had, or you, you almost certainly had cars on the track that were not genuinely technically paratized, but teams could engineer their way around those things yeah. and they could develop Correct. a new upright or they could develop yeah. a new anti-roll bar system or whatever it was to gain the speed back. And as long as each manufacturer had the right mix of good teams and midfield teams and stuff, it all kind of filtered out together. 100%, you, yeah. you, you nailed it. And, and, that, and that's, that's what that that parity review system and that trigger does is it, it takes the it removes the the best and the worst you know and uses the average and then looks at the data but you're right we've had a you know a relative a mix of relative across both manufacturers of you know top flight teams and sort of mid-pack teams that it's probably hidden it a little bit at points absolutely ford sort of restructured you know it's it's motorsport management i guess by creating a local motorsport division this year you know with yourself and brendan mcginniskin um heavily involved at the track most race weekends all that sort of stuff how important was that when it did come to fighting this parody fight and how thick has your skin become this year when you, <laughs> when you happen to go up against some pretty big characters in supercars you know team bosses then obviously you know the technical department at supercars mm-hmm. and a lot of visibility. Like, what's it been like for you personally? It's been a long time since we've kind of had a Ford Motorsport media. Uh, sorry, a Ford Motorsport manager. Yeah, you're you're it. What's that experience been? Yeah, like? eye opening. No, no, no question. I, I would put my hand put my hand up and say, I started. Uh, well, I kind of I kind of moved into the role early 2022, uh, mid 2022, and and it, the Gen Three thing was very well down the path, and it was essentially done. Um, and so I, I started to get a feel for how it had gone and how it was going and, yeah, opened my eyes. Um, I was probably quite naive, to be honest. Um, yeah, most of the people I've been dealing with on the supercars side I've known a long time, mm. but not in a role like this and certainly probably not as equals. Yeah. Um, so that's been interesting and challenging at points in time um, where I've, you know, I've had to do... I've had to do things or say things or write things uh, to protect Ford that I knew would cause certain people I like Mm -hmm. issues and dramas, but it had to be done. Um, So, yeah, certainly thickened thickened my skin, absolutely. Um, You know, uh, there's, to your point, there's a lot of, you use the term big characters, which I think is very polite um, in (laughs) supercars. Yes, absolutely. And so, yeah, you know, I suppose... In many ways, I've learned who my friends are in supercars. Um, there's not many, <laughs> which is, but that's okay. That's fine. Um, um, I've got enough friends. Um, but I've, um, I've, learned, I've learned a lot too about the inner workings of our teams and, uh, and the, the team owners and the team managers, you know, the team principals and the CEOs and the likes of David Noble at DJR, you know, a first-year CEO, talk about 
get thrown into the deep end. Mm. Yep. Um, and then getting to work really closely with Tim Edwards and Ryan Walkinshaw and the, and Stephen and Brenton Grove. Talk about impressive people. Yeah. Um, you know, and then and of course Tim and John Blanchard too. They're, it's been fantastic to really get to know those people to work closely with them. You know, and then and 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 I'll, I'll also make a special mention of Brett Ralph, mm-hmm. um, the owner of DJR, because again, first year owner, <laughs> and um, he has just he and David Noble together have learned the sport. Um, sp- they had to learn the sport ridiculously quickly and have done a sensational job behind the scenes in terms of stakeholder management and, and all of those things that needed to be done um, to, to ultimately be successful. Were you surprised by the empathy you got from some of your rivals when it came to Bathurst with Barry Ryan talking about, you know, that he would be mm. okay with that? And were you how gutted were you that you couldn't get that completely across the line for the greatest race of the year? Oh, that was tough. Yeah, that... that Going back to your earlier question, um, Rusty, that was probably the, the, the hardest week of the year mm-hmm. um, for a variety of reasons. And, yeah, for it to – for, the, you know, the intense amount of hard work that had been happening behind the scenes in the lead-up to that week, um, for it to, you know, to fall at the, the, the final hurdle, cool. I suppose, was difficult to take, no question. Um yeah, Barry and 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 and, the, and Betty and the team at Erebus. To be fair, it didn't surprise me at all. Um, they're racers. Um, they are one of the one of the organisations in our sport that genuinely hold the best intentions for the sport, mm-hmm. and they want the best for the sport, mm. and they can put aside self interest in order to see the you know the the light at the end of the tunnel or the forest for the trees. You know, um, so yeah. We, we've, we've worked, we've been sort of having those kind of conversations with Barry and his team through the year and it's been fantastic, mm. really, really great. And, um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's, but again, having said that, it's motorsport. People look to protect an advantage that they have. Um, so we, we didn't have any, uh, you know, I suppose false, um, you know, false um, ideas about what might occur mm. at Bathurst. Um, we, we knew it was, as soon as, it became apparent that there was a requirement. Supercars were stating that there was a requirement the Chev teams were needed to approve the changes when you were essentially dead in the water. Yeah. Um, yeah, which obviously was a shame, but history shows now, obviously, parity was triggered at Bathurst. That was the fifth race. Yeah. We got the adjustments before the Gold Coast and, um, and look at our guys go since then. It's been pretty strong. Taking the cars to a wind tunnel is a, a massive step for the game, a very significant moment for the sport. What, what? Tell us about the lead up to learning that they were going to. Yes, we're going to, we're going to go and do this. Yeah, sure. So again, that's I suppose something that Ford we've been asking for a long time. This, this, this updated parity review, uh, this parity process, that the testing process. We've wanted these cars in a wind tunnel for a long time, and the transient dyno testing, which they're going to do with the engines, again, is something we've wanted for a long time. So. It's world's best practice. It's what all the great motorsport categories around the world do. Mm. Mm. That's what you must do in this game that we are in. Supercars is Australia's greatest motorsport category. It's out Australia's biggest motorsport category. And it's a massively respected category around the world. So it's, it's essential that we bring these, these world's best practice um, procedures to our sport. Mm. And so, yeah, we're... The fact that we are going over to Windshear, the cars are already over there. Um, our teams, uh, our, our people are leaving shortly. You know, it's underway, it's happening, and it's brilliant. And, it, and it's what's required. Um, will it answer all of our questions? Uh, that's a challenging one. It's hard to know. Wind tunnels are complex, mm. you know, pieces of, of, of equipment, and we don't have a massive amount of time. Mm. But having said that, it's far, far better than running them up and down a runway. There's no question of that. What's, uh, what are we looking at in terms of the engine program for next year? We know that there's going to be some changes yep. to sort of uh, how that's set up um, with DJR effectively buying out um, HPE. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happened there and how that's going to look next year? Yeah, sure, sure. So, so you know, Rob's... Um, it's, 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 well, it's well documented and it's public that Rob's been crook this year. Rob Herod's been crook this year and, and he's been battling prostate cancer for the second time. And so it's knocked him around. And, and this has been a tough year. 
as we've just been saying, there's been a lot of scrutiny, there's been a lot of work being required to be done behind the scenes. And so um, Rob's a superstar in road cars, in the Ford performance world, you know, he's a rock star and that's what he that's what he does, that's where he lives and he's got more work than he can keep up with in that space. He's doing Ranger Raptor upgrades and all kinds of things for us now. So there's he's got a lot of work in that space. So he and DJR have um, yeah agreed terms. So so essentially Brett Ralph and DJR have purchased HPE and um, and they will run the engine shop. It'll be a separate entity. It'll have a it'll have its own name. It'll be its separate business. So it'll be firewalled from Dick Johnson Racing. Um, but what it will do for us is it will allow us to put resource, put people, put money and, and chase down, you know, the, the disparity in the engine program. And, uh, and, and, and by the time we, we go to Bathurst in February, hopefully where we've got equalised aero, we've got equalised engines and off we go. Just because this is the summer grill and we have to ask a tough question <laughs> at some point. Um, you would have seen all the communication coming from the US, coming from Mark Rushbrook, coming from you know Andrew and the guys at Ford Australia. Were there times when you thought these guys might walk from this? If this doesn't get sorted, this could become problematic. Um, yeah, can't lie. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things for me personally. So in, I'm in this role, and again, it comes back to what I was saying earlier about maybe being a bit naive or having to grow a thicker skin, is I'm a race fan mm. and I've grown up around supercars and this year's Bathurst 1000 was my 25th Bathurst 1000, you know. So it's one of those ones where I love this sport and so, um, yeah, to the, the, the thought of, of, um, of that potentially occurring has been, yeah, it's, it's, it's kept me up at night, mm. you know at times this year. So um, the, the, the key thing I keep coming back to with Ford and motorsport globally is that we are an organisation that, you know, we have our roots, our deepest roots in motorsport. So, I don't, you know, it's a story that's a, it's as old as time. It's, a, you know, it's 120 plus years old, but the Ford Motor Company was founded on winnings of a motor race that Henry Ford won. And he, he won, he won, I think he won $200 cash. And then he used that, parlayed that into starting the, the company. And so, you know, from the, from the very beginning, racing's been there. So um, now, but having said that, nothing's guaranteed. And in a category like this, um, we have to always assess our options and always assess the, the ROI. And yeah, like, you know, that, that week leading into Bathurst, that was a challenging week. And it's those moments in time where you do go, is this worth it? And it's not about me personally, it's about the company because that ultimately, that decision that's made, emotion will be put aside because it must be, unfortunately. It has to be a business decision. And so we're committed, we're, 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 um, we're supporting our teams and we're, we're backing our teams. We've publicly stated this, we're contracted till the end of 2024. Beyond that, it's all to play for. So this off-season testing program is like critically important to ensure that we start the season on that level, play, properly level playing field because, you know, we'll, we'll back our teams any day of the week. They're some of the best organisations in the sport, some of the best drivers in the sport. So if they've been given good equipment, we know they can win races. Before we let you go, you mentioned some of the, the teams and people there before. Just the rise of the Groves. I mean, what, what I mean, to have those cars so strong at Gold Coast and wrapping up the year in Adelaide, AVL and I were talking before we came on for this chat today about the ingredients behind the scenes. I mean, they're, they're a properly credentialed outfit now that are, that are here to play hardball, aren't they? 100%. Yeah, look, they, they came into the sport, you know, obviously as a partner of, Kelly's, of, of, of Todd Kelly and Rick Kelly. And they sat back and they watched and they learned and they observed. Put stuff in place. And then they, mm-hmm. and then they, took, o- they took over, you know, took the, holistically took over and, and then they just started investing mm. and they started recruiting. Mm. And, you know, they got the likes of David Couchy there as the team principal. They've got, um, you know, they've got Grant McPherson Shippy there as the technical director. Um, Al McVeigh as one of the race engineers. They've got good people. 
And um, Stephen and Brenton are two guys that don't like to lose, you know, and that's in, in business, that's in their own motor racing, that's in life. And so um, we knew, we knew it was very clear to us at Ford early on that they were here to play with the big, with the big boys. And um, so it's not a surprise to me or to, to, to us at Ford that they're winning races in the way that they are now. Um, we knew that would come. And, um, and the bit that I'm honestly and personally just absolutely stoked about is Matt, is Matt Payne. Mm. Great what a story. Yeah. Mm. Great Superstar star. of the future. Like he's, and that team next year, the combination of Richie Stanaway and Matthew Payne together I think is a real dark horse. Um, so I'm excited. How yeah. good is that for, Ford, for the Ford Motor Company in terms of like your New Zealand presence oh, as well? Like massive. having two, mm. two guys that are that good. Two very different stories as well yeah, with yeah, so, totally. such positivity yeah. around yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, you know, yeah, that Rich, you know, Richie's story is well documented, but, you know, the Groves are 100% the right fit for him. Mm. They're going to they, they're going to invest in him, and what I mean by that is it's not it's not about it's not just about money. It's about it's about time. It's about respect. It's about understanding, and um, and then yeah, and 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 they're getting their just and they're getting their rewards with with Matty Payne because they backed him early. Mm. They spotted the potential with him early, and they brought him in. And you know what? A lot of people would have said, "Oh, geez, bringing him into a main game seat now that's maybe a, a year early." Won a race, mm. you know, and he's and he's done a great job otherwise. So, no, he and and he's, I call him Teflon coated. It's like pressure doesn't affect him. him. It just it just runs. It's incredible. Like the way he drove it in that race, that last race in Adelaide, that was just metronomic. It was incredible. It's Van Gisburg, Van Gisburg esque. I think he's yeah. that's that's what I sort of get out of him. Yeah. yeah. Just while we're talking teams, I mean, a two car tick for the outfit, mm. streamlined. Tommy Rand was really coming on strong. Yeah. We know Cam Waters is A grade all the way. That must be causing a bit of excitement at Ford HQ as well. Because I, I think they're going to be a real strong team next again, year. Again, one hundred percent. You know, and 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 again to 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 Rod Rod Nash and and Tim's credit, obviously Tim's moving on now, but they recognised that if they want to be genuine, consistent championship contenders, four cars is too many cars. Had to do that, yeah, mm. and they had to make the cuts. It was a difficult thing to do, and so yeah. 100% a two-car Tickford team with Cameron Waters and Thomas Randall side-by-side side pushing each other next year. Sensational for us. Um, to your point, Tommy Randall, we've always known it was there. Yeah. We know the guy can drive and he's just one of the best humans, you know, just yeah, going, what an going ambassador. around. Just like, fantastic guy. Your brand. And we've used him on a couple of vehicle launches and things like that. He was at the Ranger Raptor launch with us last year. He's, he's a legend. And so, yeah, to see him... You know, living up to his potential and and the expectations in the back half of this season's been fant been fantastic as well, and then of course Cam Waters, I've known Cam since he was you know, eighteen years old, as a as a co driver at a Jack Perkins at Charlie Schwerkot Racing way back in the day. So, to see his rise and and his ability um, come to fruition as well, yeah, fantastic. I'm excited, and then you know, you have to mention the other Walkinshaw. You know, unashamedly, Walkinshaw HRT fan as a kid. Um, used to wear the, you know, used to have the Brocky Mobile One jacket and all that at Bathurst. And and so if you'd told 15-year-old Ben <laughs> <laughs> that he would have been, one, motorsport manager at Ford Australia, two, um, Working with HRT, Walkinshaw, yeah. HRT <laughs> was going to be a Ford team. It's like, what? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so so for that to have, them to have come into our fold... Obviously, having Chaz, Chaz is just again sensational ambassador. Yeah, and then Ryan Wood there next year again, sensational combination. They'll yep. push each other. Um, yeah, we expect big things out of them. And then DJR, our homologation team. You know, the most story team for us in supercars. We've got a, it's a, it's a near fifty year relationship with that team. Um, by their own admission, not a good enough year. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, but again. Brett Ralph, David Noble, uh, Benny Croak and the team there, they are doing everything that they need to do to make it right next year and to We've get it right next year. We've got Nobes year. coming up on here, so we'll be oh, grilling, great. We'll be grilling them about that. Don't awesome. worry, we'll yeah, get good. into it. Yeah, but, and I suppose and I, I'm, I'd quickly like to recognise DJR actually because, you know, whilst unfortunately they might not have reaped the benefits of their work on the track, 
the other Ford teams have, yeah. you know. So, and that needs to be made clear. DJR did that work, did that aero work in conjunction with Ford Performance in the US and Grove and Tickford have made hay, you know. So that's, that's an important part of the process too. Thank you for coming in to speak FA headquarters today. I know the Ford fans watching the KTM Summer Grill will really appreciate the insights. The year finished strongly for you. There's some good stuff in the pipeline. We hope 2024 brings you much success. Thanks, Rusty. Cheers, mate. There he is, Ben Nightingale. That wraps up this edition of the Summer Grill. Check back in tomorrow morning to see who our next special guest is. You could be a winner each episode of the Summer Grill. KTM are giving you the chance to win a bar stool, a mug, and this race-inspired clock as well. So there's more good reasons to tune in and hear from some of the stars of world motorsport here as a part of the KTM Summer Grill. All you've got to do is click on the link below, fill in your details, and you could be in the running to win.